Hi, my name is Drew Michael. I'm Yupik and Anupiak and half Polish, so I'm mixed race. And I was born in Bethel, Alaska, and adopted out of my culture and raised in Eagle River, Alaska. My piece, Between Four Lines, was designed when I was in Santa Fe, New Mexico at the Institute for American Indian Art. And when I travel, I usually like to allow the place where I'm at to influence the work or the concepts that I'm uh, kind of working on or expressing through my art. So the Between Four Lines piece is definitely connected to the place of Santa Fe with the large open skies and the dark nights and then also the topography in the mountains. This piece that we've been looking at Between Four Lines is actually, um, it's made out of basswood and that's the, the wood I typically use. Sometimes I use uh, yellow cedar, which is from down south in southeast Alaska, or I use um, cottonwood or poplar. So those are the types of wood I use. This particular piece was made out of basswood. It's a soft wood, not uh, natural to Alaska. It's from the northeast quadrant of America. It's a straight grained wood. It's pretty clear, which means it doesn't have a lot of knots in it and it's not very acidic, so you're not gonna have a hard time with your tools breaking down or anything like that. Um, this particular piece came out of Missouri, I think, but I bought it in Albuquerque at a, a exotic wood shop. Most of the time when I'm starting a piece, I spend that, some time like meditating or calming myself and thinking about where a story lives within myself and my body. Um, and then before I create a piece, I kind of imagine that process uh, and also what the formation of that piece, um, what it will look like, what materials I'm going to use, and uh, even think about the different steps of like how to what areas I'm going to cut out first if I'm going to take a block of wood and I'm going to make an outline of a shape what areas I'm going to cut out quickly and then what areas I'm going to spend more time on making more detailed cuts and shaping. Between four lines when I started creating that piece um, I had thought about that piece for months because I designed it in January and what month is it now? It's April so I've definitely spent the time thinking about the process, the form itself, and then the materials, and then um, kind of the image of what it will look like. And so when I started the piece, I was able to just crank out uh, a lot of what I had saw in my head already and was able to just do it quickly, um, but with pretty good accuracy. So if you look at a lot of traditional masks or some contemporary mask makers today, oftentimes people like to sand their work down and make them look really smooth. When I was starting out my mask making career, uh, just kind of figuring out the, the form itself uh, and kind of what I was wanting to connect with as an artist, I realized that I, I wanted my work to look pretty organic and I wanted it to have its uh, own kind of personality and so every piece that I create I, I leave with the gouge marks on it because I feel like it there's kind of a more organic feel to the, to the pieces themselves when I do that. Um, to me when I, if you're going to sand a piece down a lot it looks a little bit not like wood after a while uh, because you're making it so smooth and then typically people paint on their masks but what I like to do is make stains so that you can see the grain of the wood uh, along with the, the uh, gouge marks. What I want to talk a little bit about is my exploration of new materials. I started branching out 
when I was in the high school program at the Alaska Native Heritage Center with Kathleen Carlo, she helped me branch out of my normal traditional materials. And so I started using things that were man-made, things like metals or uh, plastics, glass, a wire, uh, different kinds of beads. I started using glass beads um, and acrylic paints and oil paints. So traditional materials might have been organic materials like feathers, sinew, um, even blood and bones and things like that. When I first started my mask making, um, I was creating pieces that I, I was kind of trying to replicate. So I was really concerned about making work that looked traditional and as I grew into myself, I wanted to start telling my own story and so my story doesn't look like other people's and so my work shouldn't look like other people's and I started to think about kind of my own style and, and um, my own ideas that were going to come out in my work and traditionally masks were used to tell a story either about like the creation story or maybe spirits or things that are unseen or maybe they were used to try to in a way say a prayer to a spirit or a, an entity for like a good hunt or health or something like that uh, but I I'm talking about, in my work, I'm talking about things that I, I'm experiencing in my life and how I see the world. painted it with uh, acrylics and oil paint uh, to get the coloration on the left side and then the white on the right is acrylic To get that contrast with the dark and the light, or the dark and the color, I used either a wood burning tool, which you'll see on the left side, looks, it looks like a topography. And then on the right side, I used a flame uh, torch, a propane torch, and I was able to burn the surface of the wood. And this actually connects to a traditional act of burning a mask after somebody uses it in a ceremony. And the reason why people did that was to in a way kind of solidify a ceremony or ascend your message whatever your story was that you were trying to share through the mask ceremony you wanted to be able to send that off to the spirit world so you would burn a mask or put it out into the tundra or the land and let it decompose uh, and sometimes they would just give them to kids and let them play with them but it was a way for those uh, items the masks themselves to kind of re be released and then that story be released so when I burn my pieces, I'm connecting to that traditional act of burning a, a mask and then also releasing a story uh, to the unseen world. When I first started out as a mask maker, even just trying it, um, I felt really like scared and worried about what people thought and I was really concerned about being traditional enough or contemporary enough or anything enough and I was so worried that I was going to do something wrong and then as I developed in my career and I started learning more about the culture and the purposes behind mask making 
people wanted to connect to that and they wanted to be a part of it too. And so now I'm going out and teaching all over the state of Alaska. I'm amazed at how much people come to me and ask me questions about their own culture. Because there's that question, is your culture um, like the objects and the things that you see from your culture or is it a way of living? Or is it even a blood quantum? And so going out to villages and teaching and having people ask me questions about cultural identity and spirituality and even just how to work with these materials and why they were used um, was kind of eye-opening because I kind of expected to go out to a village and learn from the people about how to live and be indigenous and the way of life. And in reality, we were learning from each other. I was learning about a way of life, of how to live a life of subsistence and connect with the land and the place and the people in that community, wherever I was at. And people were asking me about history and culture and tradition. And it's funny because I'm, I'm doing a traditional art form, but I'm doing it in a contemporary fashion. And so there's kind of this, there's a lot of different levels and blendings that are happening. And um, it's a wild experience to be in that middle ground. It's like living in the reality I never lived, or what was it? <laughs> it's the reality I never lived. And it's written in all of who I am, that I'm not any one thing, I'm everything, and I'm connected to it all. And that is a very indigenous concept to think about being connected to everything. Uh, yeah. So, uh, on this piece, Between Four Lines, the piece that I'm sending to France, uh, you'll see um, on the original drawing, and then after the piece is done, uh, you'll see some, some appendages that go on the side. And typically those would be made out of wood and bent, or steam bent, and they'd be fashioned into hoops. So when I was walking around in uh, a specialty wood shop, I found this stuff called veneer, which is really flexible. It's a really thin layer of uh, wood that you put on uh, like cheap plywood and they use it for like furniture and stuff. But um, what's kind of cool about this, it comes in rolls and it has a glue on the back. And this is used for edging. And so what's interesting about this glue is it heat, it's heat set. So you don't have to apply it wet or anything. It's already on here. And uh, what I like to do, I've, I've always been fascinated with the lamination process. And so um, you can basically bend wood into any form or any material into any form and glue it together and it will stay in that position because the pieces will hold, hold them in shape with the glue. And so what I was able to do is to kind of shortcut the process of steam bending. I, I took these pieces of veneer and laminated them together and I, I put them around forms so you can create any shape you want. In this coming year, uh, I was asked to be part of a couple of shows in France, uh, one for a gallery and one for a museum. Something around just under 30 artists have, uh, a lot of my peers and friends and mentors uh, we've all decided, uh, because of Perry Eaton and his influence, he kind of called us all and asked us if we wanted to be part of the show and gift pieces of our art and our culture to France. And so it's kind of a turning of the tables and the tides um, because instead of getting our stuff taken from us, um, we're actually gifting our culture. And that's actually a very indigenous way of doing things, is sharing and including people into culture and community. And so we're kind of extending a hand out and mending a lot of this, um, some, in some ways, hurt 
And so we're, we, we want to open our hands and our hearts and share our culture rather than um, try to steal it back or take it or feel hurt when somebody else does that. And, and then also, in a way, preserve it because now we have an opportunity to, to be part of telling the story rather than having somebody else tell the story about us. Being part of this collection of uh, pieces has been a great um, honor to me. I, I can't believe I was asked to be a part of this show. Some of the, the great masters, uh, mask makers in um, Alaska Native cultures are, are donating and to be included with that lineup is uh, it's a, a great gift and a great opportunity and so I'm, I'm excited to be included in this show. Oh, oh, oh.